shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Right. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. If y'all walk past and all these brothers had dresses on with flowers on. And we read the Bible loud. I mean, that would be confusion, right? Yeah. That would be confusion. But the Lord said we can't have dresses on. Women can't wear what now? Pants. Right? Or anything that's re uh, revealing or not modest. So our uh, women have to have dresses on. If we love God, we're going to have to put on a dress for the Lord. Because the Lord said we're kings and princes, but also princesses on earth. When's the last time you seen Cinderella in some damn uh, 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 tight jeans? Like she got up in the morning, she put on some uh, tights. Lululemon tights. Right? She looked at... Yeah, she always had it because she knows who she is, brother. Now that you know who you are, you got to put on a dress for the Lord. Do we have a problem doing that? Okay, all praise. So we're we going to put it back on, right? For God. Come on, sister. Yeah, yeah, we're going we gonna to do it for God. I mean, give it up for the sister, man. All praise. All praise to the most high. All praise to the most high, man. Right here. Huh? First Timothy two. No, I mean, so yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. But did you get a flyer? No, we didn't get a flyer. Somebody, somebody, give him a flyer, Bob Kishan, right? And, and brothers be teaching out here every weekend. Right. All, all praise to the Most High. We got another. All praise to the Most High. Man. What's going on, sis? What's going on, family? Did y'all overhear the conversation we was having with this young uh, with family right here? Okay. So is your problem with interracial, like marriage, or do you think that's uh, lawful for God? You think God's Oh, yeah. Well, they try to cut us. That's what they try to do. They try to cut. Yeah. <laughs> Why was the man referred to as a beast and a pedophile when he was walking by with a black woman, but he didn't do anything to him? I got you. So men in the Bible are compared to his beast. I don't know if you know that. Let me read it for you. Read okay. Ecclesiastes 3. Okay. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 18. Oh. I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, right. that the Most High might manifest them, right. and that they might see that them that they themselves are beasts. Or what? Are or beasts. So in the Bible, you have certain men that's compared to as animals if they do animal-like things. You know what? Oh. For what? For that which befalls the sons of men. That what's that befalls the sons of men, right? You know what? Befalls beasts. Befalls what? Befalls beasts. beasts. You know what? Even one thing befalls them, right. as the one dieth, so dieth the other. Right. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man have no preeminence above a beast. Right. For all is vanity. For all is what? For all, all is vanity. So in the Bible, you have men that's compared to his animals, or you have compared to his beasts. But as the Lord said, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. So we're going to get King David, and let's see what he said. The book of Psalms, chapter 49, and verse 12. Nevertheless, be an honor about not. He perished like the beast that perished. He what? He perished like the beast that perished. Like the beast that perished. So King David compared men to beasts as well. Now, regarding with interracial marriage is what we see, and the reason why he called them out, let's go to the book of Tobit, chapter 4, verse 12. Tobit, 4, verse 12. Beware of all whoredom, my son. So the Lord said, beware of all whoredom, my son. Now, we know what whoredom is. What, what do you think whoredom is? What is whoredom? Sexual immorality, but there's also another form of boredom as well, and the Lord's gonna uh, tell you, you know what? And cheaply take a wife of the seed of thy father. So you can freak off with any nation. Take a wife of the, the seed, seed of, of thy your father. father. The man telling his son this, you know And take not a strange woman to wife. So if we see our sister or our brother, Leviticus 19:17, we can't suffer sin upon them. We have to correct them. The Lord said you can't take a strange woman or a strange husband to wife or to marry. We have to let them know that's wrong according to God. You know, hold on, I got you. you know? 
which is not of thy father's tribe, right. for we are the children of the prophets, right. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We have a better lineage and culture than them. We don't. Remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning, even that they all married wives of their own kindred. Of their own kindred, you know what? And were blessed in their children, and their seed shall inherit the land. Right. Now, therefore, my son, now listen to this. love thy brethren. For the Lord say, love, love thy, thy brethren. brethren. You know and despise, despise not thou in thy heart thy brethren, thy sons and daughters of thy people. Right. If you take a wife or a woman or a husband of another nation, that means God said you hate your own people. So if you want to love your own people, how about you marry the woman of your own nation? How about you marry a man of your own nation so your kids can be blessed? And when they look at their father or mother, they will have strength of who they are. Right. Okay. So if this is the case, and I hear the scriptural evidence, thank you very much. Yes. Um, I just want to know if y'all revere Moses as a prophet. Yes. Okay. So Moses, wasn't he in an interracial relationship with... And was it an Ethiopian woman? Okay. Yeah, so why is it different for Moses and everybody else? And also, was it, it was Boaz and Ruth, right? Yeah. Because she was a Moabite. Right. But Boaz was um, an Israelite, correct? Right. So the thing is, I understand what you're saying, but are they... I'm sorry, what? No, I, no, I was just saying, um, were they in rebellion? No, Moses wasn't in rebellion. Okay. Noah was Boaz. Okay, I want to hear. All right, let's get it. Go to the book of Deuteronomy 25, verse 5. Deuteronomy 25, verse 5. If brethren dwell together, and one of them die, verse 2. And it shall be, if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten, that the judge shall cause him to lie down. And to be beaten before his face according to his fault by a certain number. Right. Forty strikes he may give him and not exceed, lest if he should exceed and beat him above these with many strikes, then thy brother shall seem vile unto thee. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he try to put out the corn. Right. If brethren dwell together right. and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go unto her and take her to a wife and perform the duty of an husband, so like the duty of an husband's brother unto her. Right, so what we have to understand in the book of Ruth, what Boaz, what reason why he married Ruth is because that was an inheritance, that was a lot. That's what he had to do as his brother because he was the nearest of kin to his brother that had died. And we're reading the law of Ruth being that inheritance so he had to marry her to claim that inheritance. Now we're gonna read it again, read it again. If brethren dwell together, right. and one of them die, and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without a stranger. Right. Her husband's brother, her what? Her husband's her brother, husband's brother shall go in unto her, and take her to him to wife, and perform the duty of a husband. Because brother. the limit died, right? So Boaz, the nearest of kin, had to marry Bo uh, Ruth to keep that inheritance. Read on. Of a husband's brother unto her. And it shall be that the firstborn which she bear shall succeed in the name of his brother. To succeed in the name of his brother, right? Read on. Which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. And his name be not put out of Israel. So that's the reason why Boaz had to marry Ruth. Did that answer your question? Yeah, now Let's get it. We're going to Numbers chapter 12, verse 1. Because Ruth. Uh, I'm not Ruth, uh, Miriam and Aaron had the same thought against Moses as well. Why did he get him an Ethiopian woman? Why did he do that? It was murmuring against him. Right. Let's see what God said about him. Right, 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 right. Look at Numbers chapter 12 and verse 1. Bring it out. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman right. whom he had married. Can y'all say the same thing, read on. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Right. And they said, have the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Right. Has he not spoken also by us? Right, so you married an Ethiopian woman, right? Who does he think he is? The Lord came to us too. It was a little bit jealous, right? There was hate. We don't. And the Lord heard it. And the what? What the Lord say? And, and the, the Lord, Lord heard it. Heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Right. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out, ye three. Unto the tabernacle of the congregation. So the Lord said, let's settle this, right? Y'all come out, right? We don't. And day three came out, verse five. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud. Right. 
and stood in the door of the tabernacle right. and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. Right. And he said, Hear now my words, and there be a prophet among you, I am the most high, who will make myself known unto him in a vision. Right. And will speak unto him in a dream. So if there was a prophet among you, he's gonna be known in a vision or a dream. Because you are prophets or seers, they have visions, they have dreams. Let's see if Moses is like the rest of these men. We know it? My servant Moses is not so. What the Lord say? My servant, servant Moses is not Moses so. Moses wasn't a regular man. He wasn't a prophet. He wasn't a seer. He was a prophet, but he was above them. He wasn't so. What else we doing? Who was faithful in all my house. He was faithful in all the Lord's house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth. What the Lord say? With, With him will I speak, speak mouth to mouth. To Moses, mouth to mouth. Even apparently, he's going to tell you that. We don't. Even apparently. Right. And not in dark speeches. Right. And the similitude of the Lord shall be behold. Right. Wherefore, were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And they, and they, and they spoke against Moses like he was just a regular man. So to answer your question, why did Moses get an Ethiopian wife? Because the Lord allowed him to. Right. The, Lord, the Lord allowed Moses to do that. And nobody's going to speak against Moses because Moses spoke with the Lord mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not as it seems. It's, that's it. It is on it. If you have any questions, ask the Most High God why he allowed it to. You have any more questions? Did that answer both your questions? Not quite, because the Bible says that God is no respect to a person. Okay. And if he allowed Moses to have an interracial marriage, and he allowed Boaz to have an interracial marriage, so said, what? Boaz to have an interracial, if he allowed them to... Boaz is keeping along. It, they, but if he allowed them to, to have an interracial marriage, he allows us to do it as well. The I want to say one thing. Other thing I wanted to ask. Real quick, sister. Real quick. Know, I, the the I, relationship I, that that so-called black woman had with a so-called white man is different than the relationship that an Israelite man can have with a Hebrew. Right. When you read Numbers chapter 31, Deuteronomy chapter 21, Deuteronomy chapter 20, 1 Kings chapter 11, David, the men of Israel, you can take a heathen woman captive and make her your wife. An Israelite woman, by any means necessary, cannot be with an Edomite. By no means can she be with a so-called white man. Therefore, therefore, when you study the law and you understand the scriptures, you would know that us calling him a pedophile, us calling him a beast, is completely justifiable because he's violating the daughters of Zion, violating God, and he's violating y'all. And y'all should be mad right now. Y'all shouldn't be contending. Y'all should be mad right now. Y'all should be more upset. Y'all should follow her and say, you need to get out that relationship with that white man. Not come against the men of God to advocate and defend all types of madness that you've accepted in the world. Which is the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son's name, Yahweh Shah. Right, so sister, are you a Christian? Pentecostal? So you're a Christian? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, well, let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 26. Let's start there. We're going to build up through the Spirit. Now, Christianity, when was it given? With Jesus Christ. 
Christ is death, burial, and resurrection. And that's the thing. If you believe They're going to go back to the but, but if you if you yes he did. He said I am Lord, the Lord. What did the Lord tell in the Great Commission when you read the book of Matthew, chapter twenty eight? Go to Matthew chapter twenty eight. Yes. yes, he taught the word God that we was that Acts only by 11, verse twenty six. And when he found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church right. and taught much people. And taught much people. Now these are the apostles. They're teaching much people. And the disciples were called Christians first. The disciples were called Christian first in Antioch. No, during the time of the Lord. In Antioch. No, the Lord gave in Antioch. In Antioch. So before that, they weren't called Christians. So that's the first understanding you need to have. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 28, and start at verse 14. The book of Matthew, matter of fact, go to 18. Chapter 28 and verse 18. And Yahweh Shai came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me. Now this is what the Christians call the Great Commission. And this is the Lord, you understand, saying, All power is given unto me. Let's see if he gives them religion. Let's see if he gives them customs. Let's see if he gives them anything in this world. Because they were called Christians first. In Antioch, this is after when the Lord had already descended in Acts the first chapter. Right. Read on. Unto me in heaven and in earth. Right. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Right. So when did the Lord ever give Christianity? Go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 6. When did the Lord ever give Christianity? Okay, so let me ask Because this is a kind of moment. Yes. Christianity is just a description of being a disciple, Christ-like. That's what Christianity, and Jesus definitely told us to follow him, and he is a God of love. The Bible says in Acts, I believe it's 17, that we are all made of one blood and one nation. So whether you're white, black, Hispanic, whatever, we all came from one blood. Right. And there's neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female, but we're all one in the body of Christ. That's why it is wrong for you all to call a man a beast just because he's white and in an interracial marriage. The other thing is... Hold on, I want to Jesus touch on that. I want to touch on that. No, 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 we're not going to do that. Because you didn't answer our question. You didn't deal with the Bible. You're switching it up now. So if we're going to deal, whatever you question, we address it. Hold on, hold on. Then we address it. Then we address your question. Then we address your question. Yes or no? We're under grace. See, now you got spirits on you. We try to deal with you in peace. Right, but I mean, thus said the Lord, we're going to have to bring out the scripture. I'm at peace. So I'm telling you, you asked us a question. We answered the question. Now it's time for you to answer what we brought out through the Spirit. That's what we want to hear. You got a Bible in your hand. The so-called the holy woman. We want to hear the Lord. Give the Lord said. We don't want to hear you talk. We want to hear the Lord. Give 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 the let them speak as the oracles of God. Right. When you have to go inside of the oracles, give me the book of Sirach, chapter 33, and verse number 3. You have to even know what an oracle is. What is an oracle? Because the Lord said, if any man speak, let him speak what? The oracles of God. What is an oracle? And what are the oracles of God? The scripture. The scripture. The scripture. What is the oracle of God? The scripture. What is the oracle the of God? Scripture. Bring that out. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 33, and verse number 3. A man of understanding trusts in the Lord, and the Lord is faithful unto him as an or. As a what? As, as an or. or. Christians don't read the law. As, as an or. or. They don't know what the law is. As, as an or. or. As a what? As, as an or. or. You don't know about the law. Because Christians are all in the New Testament. Guess what? Christians the don't go back to the Old the Testament. Lord. Christians have no understanding Lord. about Lord. the law. Yeah. They don't understand it in the foundation. Yeah. We're going to bring out that yeah. Give me the book of 1 Kings, chapter 22, verse 
14. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord has said unto me, that will I speak. I'm gonna speak the whole thing. What the Lord has speak, that will I speak. That will I speak. Right. Whatever the Lord saith unto me, that's what I'm gonna speak. I'm not gonna hold my Bible like this and speak out of my own vain opinion. Right. No, Running my mouth out of order, don't know what's going on. Give me the book of first two, two verse eleven. The Lord said a woman should never be speaking in the church. God, God. Did you read that out of the New Testament? Bring that up. First Timothy, chapter four, and verse number eleven. These things command you. Let no man despise thy youth. Second Timothy, chapter two, and verse eleven. Let the woman learn in silence. Uh -oh. Let, Let the, the woman learn, learn in silence. Let the woman learn in silence. Let the woman learn in silence. Thus the Lord 
love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah, you didn't do it. But if we bite you and devour one thing. another, you take didn't. heed that you be not consumed. Take heed because uh -huh, those uh -huh. men will put love those men in bondage. Take heed because they weren't showing love by entrapping those men yourself. under the law. Right. That's what it's talking about. It's not talking about you're free from love keeping all the laws. Because if you're free from yourself. keeping all the laws, you could be a pedophile. Right. You could be a murderer. Right. You could be a liar. Right. You could be an unjust dealer. Right. You could do all things that are contrary to thus saith the Lord. Right. Right. That ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then. Walk in the spirit. You can rest right there. If you calling him a beast, you did not love your neighbor as yourself. But aren't these the words of God? He he said, did not God love, call man a beast? Said, Love your neighbor, neighbor as yourself. Who is your neighbor? That's right. Your neighbor. Who is your neighbor? These are my neighbors out here. Right? Oh. So blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. No. Give me the class and put us on right. Chapter 12, verse 10. The Lord said, never trust thy enemy, man. Right? Yeah. And we don't trust our enemy. We're not in trap, right, by your slave owner and your slave Jesus. master, man. Right. We hate the so-called white man. Right. We hate wickedness, man. Right. Give me the book of Second Edges, chapter 16. Yes, 
that's what you said. Give me the book of Revelation, man. See, see these Christians are a punching bag. This is how you warm up before cat, man. Why are you just a punching bag, man? Give me the book of Revelation, chapter 2, and verse number 9, and 3 and verse 9, man. And we really want to teach you, sister. It's really sorry that you're in the spirit. Or bring this out. Revelation, chapter 2, and verse 9. I know thy works, and tribulation, and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy. I know the blasphemy, the evilness, the craftiness, right? Read the sorcery of them which say they are Jews. Which say they are Jews, man. They say that they're the Jews, man. But you're looking at the Jews, man. I'm a Jew. He's a Jew. His brothers are Jews. My brothers and sisters are Jews, man. Read. And are not. And are not. This is devil. And are not. The Lord says. And are not. But are the synagogues of Satan. The Lord says that he is the synagogue of Satan, man. Break that down according to the Bible. Break that down, man. Allow ignorant nigga woman is not gonna overtake the servant to the Lord, huh? Break that down, huh? Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 7, verse 11, huh? Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13. Right? You're, you're making a fool out of yourself, huh? The Lord said that they are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Bring that up. Proverbs 7, verse 11. She is loud and stubborn. What the Lord said? She is loud and stubborn. What y'all say? She is loud and stubborn. She is loud and stubborn, huh? You're stubborn. You're just a loud, stubborn nigga woman, man. You need to repent. Put on righteousness as it clothes you and be meek and submissive. Read. Her feet abide not in her house. Her feet don't abide in her house. You're all in the midst of the concourse in the middle of the streets trying to combat the servant to the most high. Read. Now is she without. Now in the streets. Now in the what? Now in the streets. What is he doing? Now in the streets. He's just all in the streets, man. Walking around with your Bible. We should confiscate that Bible, man. And give it to somebody that's actually going to read it and interpret it through the spirit. Read it. And lying in wait at every corner. She's just lying in wait at every corner, man. You're over here, you're over there. You're all over the place, read. So she caught him and kissed him. right there. Bring that up. And verse 13, a foolish woman. A foolish woman is clamorous. It's clamorous. Why are you acting clamorous? You didn't answer one question. You're yelling over the scriptures. You have no respect for the most high God. Right, read? She is simple and no nothing. the founder of the service of the Lord. She is simple and no nothing. When you come in the lion's den, she is simple and no nothing. You are simple and know it nothing. What do you know? You don't know the Lord, man. You're not, you don't know the Lord. You're not keeping any commandments. Give me the class, 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 3, man. If you think you know the Lord, you got to break this down. Bring that up. 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 3. And hereby, we do know that we know him. Read that again. We do know that we know him. This is how we know if we're truly the servants of the Most High God. Give me the book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 18. Read. If we keep his commandments, where are her pants? If we keep his commandments, got no pants. If we keep his commandments, are you keeping God's commandments? Are you keeping God's commandments? Are you keeping his commandments? Jesus said, his commandment is that you love one another. See, all these Christians want to do is love. When we're showing you love, man, we getting on you and showing you love. We tell you to repent and showing you love. We tell you need to be submissive and showing you love, man.
truth is not in you. The truth isn't there. Love of God. You keep the whole keep all the law. Oh, but you don't keep the law. You don't keep the law. Didn't have the Lord going around upbraiding the cities, getting on the people. Didn't have the Lord going around upbraiding the cities and getting on the people. Yes or no? Did the Lord go around rebuking people? Yes or no? Did the Lord go around rebuking people? Yes or no? Did the Lord go around rebuking people? Yes or no? Did the Lord go around rebuking people? Yes or no? Did the Lord go around rebuking people? Yes or no? Did the Lord go around rebuking people? Yes or no? Did the Lord go around rebuking people? Yes or no? Did the Lord go around and verse number 13. Let's show you what love is. You don't know what love is. You have no understanding of what love is. Bring it up. John 2, verse 13. And the Jews' Passover was at hand. And Yahweh Shah went up to Jerusalem. Hold on. This is love. This is the Lord around his people going up to Jerusalem during the feast. Read. And found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and right goats. were going off. Let's see what your sweet, white, so called Jesus is going to do, man. Right. Is he going to give him a hug? Are right, you simple one? You simple one, shame on you. How did the Lord show love to his people? How did he direct them? How did he build them up? Read. And the changes of the money city. And when he had made a scourge of small cords. What the Lord do? And we had made a scourge of small cords. They don't know my God. We had made a scourge of small cords. Why is the Lord making a scourge of cords? What is he going to do with those? What is he going to do? No, ain't no guess what, buddy, man. Right. Ain't no guess what, buddy. Right. You're the lies there right now. Right. You gotta answer that. No, 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 no. You gotta answer that. Why is the Lord making a scourge of whips to do what with? What is he gonna do with it? Confound it. Confound it. Confound it. And we 
answered through the Spirit. All of these brothers was in the world, but the Most High drew them back here through the Spirit. God. The Lord seen all of us through the Spirit. God. Really? And said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed. Read it again. Behold, an Israelite indeed.
So what is he referring to then? Right? Just bring it out. Just come, come into Reddit. Okay, okay, keep going. Meaning what? So what what Bible verse can y'all prove that, that that means that? The Lord said out of the wit in the mouth of two or three witnesses make everybody be established. What precept can y'all show that? I'm gonna take a loop, chapter 24. Okay, bring it out. Finish your point. Finish your point. We just we just stacking the precepts. Keep going. How about I tell you something? No, we don't want to hear you about hold your peace. We're talking to the sisters right now. What's your point? Finish your point. He's a He's a So, okay, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. I understand you're ready now. So, what Bible verse can you go to to show us that that's what that means? Right. Okay, we're going to show you right now what it means. John 3. Read this out first. Give me this first. Let's show you what the Lord came to fulfill. First of all, let's read it first. What the sisters quote in Matthew. Got it. Oh, Matthew 6. 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 Matthew I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Christ fulfilled the law. He, he fulfilled the law, right? So we're reading the law or quoting the law that he did. So we're going to do the first. For verily, I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one shot of. God, this is St. Matthew 5 17. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not. I. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. What, what, what color is the letter on that? Red. Okay, so this is Christ speaking, Lord Ben. He said he did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. So we got to understand why is he saying that. He asked me in 19. This is the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled. Are y'all listening or y'all listening? Are y'all listening? So we're trying to show y'all, but we're just going to bring it out. Y'all not listening. We, we ain't going to deal with y'all. I'm trying to come and deal with y'all as brothers and sisters. But if y'all don't want to hear it, we're going to cut you up. That all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. So he's, those are the things that he said must be fulfilled. That's written in the Psalms about it. him coming and riding upon the coat ass. Him then uh, being held in the cross. Isaiah 53, all these different precepts. Uh, all these different precepts that he's saying, those are the things he had to come and fulfill. Right? So, read all that. This is Acts chapter 3, verse 18. But those things which God before has shewed by the mouth of all his prophets. By the all the mouth of his prophets. Two or three witnesses on the case. That Christ should suffer. He has so fulfilled. Those are the things he fulfilled. He fulfilled the law and the prophets. Those are the things that he fulfilled. So, what do you show me that he fulfilled for? Thank you, love yourself. Keep on doing the work. Keep on doing the work. Where do you show out of two of the witnesses that the Lord said that? We just showed two of the witnesses. We didn't even go through the song of the law. We didn't even go through it yet. But I want to show you how can you show us what your what your premise is? Two or three witnesses. Show us the show us the man. Give me Isaiah chapter fifty-three. Give me Isaiah chapter fifty-three, and we're gonna go to verse number one. We're gonna we're gonna let you get your points if you can find it. The Lord willing, you can. Because now we're gonna just show you, right? Hold the, hold the peace. That, how is that? Okay, I was here. I was here. Give me the idea of the idea of the idea of the idea of the idea of
Okay, can I ask you, remember you read it, I just want to make, I just want to ask you one question. I just want to ask you, so, who was that, who was, who was he speaking to in there? Well, who, who are the two people that's having a conversation? So when you read it in John chapter 3 and verse number 3 all down, who is he speaking to? Who came unto him at night? Okay, and what was his, what was his nationality? Okay, so if it's two Israelites talking about, hold on, wait, wait, I'm going to make my answer If it's two Israelites speaking, how can we equate the whole damn world? If it's me and my brother, we kind of talk about, man, you know what, man, we should go get everybody, in, in our house, we should go get everybody, you know, you know, a good cheese thing. How the hell are they talking about everybody who's down outside this is a conversation between them? It don't make sense. Make it make sense. Right. So how do you equate the, the lost children of Israel? Oh, okay, I'll let you see. I'm gonna let you see. Come on. Come on, let's see. Let's do it. If I, if I learn, you just say it I don't want to take it too long, man. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be in the order. I'm trying to let you go, and I'm going to go, you know, keep going. Go to peace, man. You're speaking. You're being rude, man. Why are you coming up being rude? The sister is talking. Let her talk. Go to peace, man. Go to peace. Bring this out. Between the two Israelites that speaking, how can we equate everybody into that? Because the whole conversation is still going, even when you read John chapter 3 and verse 14, what is he referring to? How can he, I want you to make it understand, make me understand that that world is talking about everybody in the goddamn world. If this conversation is between Israelites. If we just established that it was Nicodemus world and Christ speaking, why the hell would they be talking about everybody in this conversation between them? Bring this out now. We're going to show you. Bring this out. mean earth. <laughs> Give me Isaiah chapter 25 and 17. Go. Give me Psalm chapter world. 90 and verse number 1. God, this is Isaiah chapter 45 verse 17. For Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Yeah, shall not be confounded, ashamed, nor confounded, world without end. It's different worlds according to the Bible. The Lord said that this world that he's referring to in that precept, that's why the Lord brother brought out earlier, precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here with it, there with it. And Christians fail to, to follow those premises, that's where they always going to be flawed in their understanding. Keep reading this out in Psalm chapter 90 and verse number 2. This is Psalm 90 and 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world. Hold on, hold on. He said, Before thou hast formed the, the earth, earth the and earth. the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. Why do you make the separation between the earth and the world if the world is just every damn body in the world? Right. Why in Psalm chapter 90, verse 2, did he make a difference? Right. Make me understand it. I'm trying to understand. If y'all are showing us, make me understand it. But that's why you keep it in context and don't make you understand who is speaking. Who is the conversation between? I see if he was talking to a damn heathen and he told it to everybody. He was speaking amongst his own people. How do that make sense? We just read John 316. It says everybody in the world, so called to y'all. But we just broke down what the world means. Give me, give me the book of Luke. Give me the book of Luke. Chapter 2. We don't want to hear what you're saying anymore. Give me Luke chapter 2 and verse number 7. Bring this out. You're sick of it, man. This is what we got to do. We come out here and try to teach our people and teach society, and we always got two of them uh, trying to prove to another nation. Man. They don't want to hear it. Now they cut up because they thought the world was talking about everybody. And it's not, man. This is the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 7. It's 
up here, who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the giving of the law and the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh and the promises. Everything belongs to the Israelites, so how can y'all relate and put everybody in it? Make it make sense. Keep going up. Huh? Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came? Concerning the what? Concerning the flesh, Christ came. Who is over all? God bless for heaven. At the end of the day, y'all cannot prove y'all premise. We gave the system of mind. Like we humbled down. We tried to let our sister break it down, but she couldn't because they reprobate in their mind, man. Keep going, now. You said Romans what? what? Read it from your phone. Read Romans 10, verse 9 from your phone. We got the, the classic precept that the he, the heathen finna go to. Bring it up. This is the book of Romans, chapter 10 and verse 1. Bring it up. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel. Is, for everybody. For Israel. God love everybody. For Israel is that they may, might be saved. The Lord always, everybody is going to say that the Israelites are going to have to be saved. Not the people who you are speaking, man. Our people love the heathen, man. They love tap dancing for master, man. They're being bent over in butt book, man. Our people pure clothes, man. And that's why the Lord got to come and destroy two-thirds of our people, man. He had people like this, man. Literally, a process is seared with folly, man. And this head damn like a boulder, man. Bring this up. Verse 2. For I bear them breaker that they have a zeal of God. What our people got? They have a zeal of God. And we love, Lord, we profess it with our mouth, with our mouth. Hey, but what? But not according to knowledge. Not according to what? But, but not, not according, according to knowledge. Now, no fringes is on. He don't know who he is. And they was a Sabbath day. He probably broke the Sabbath day. He probably eats wine. He probably do all kind of wickedness. But trying to feed the men of the Lord. How that sound, man? It's violent. The sister got hair wrapped on with the dress. And mom's just doing whatever she want, man, with the clocks on. This is ridiculous, man. Bring this out, This is a book of Psalms. Chapter 147 and verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. He never dealt with the other nations, man. We understand that. We said we said, but it's not through the it's through the what you mean? Okay, we okay, we understand that. What you mean by that? So would you say, I got a question, would you say that everybody in this world is a Jew? Can I be a spiritual dude? Can a, can a so-called Chinese or a Moabite man be? That's not what so, so are you referring to John 316? So are you referring to John 316? Show me a second witness. Show me two or three witnesses on that map. You don't want to hear it, man. Bring it out. You said what? You said just what? What'd you say? Make a point again. What you mean? Show me that preset. It's John 316. It's not substantial enough, man. Bring this out. This is the book of John, chapter 11, verse 49. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all. Hold on, read that one more time. Ye know nothing at all. Right. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people right. and that the whole nation perish not. Right. Keep going. And this spake he not of himself. Right. But being high priest that year, right. he prophesied that Jesus on, that what? That Jesus right. should die for that nation right. and not for that nation only. But what up? But that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. James 21. Hold the peace. Give me James 21. This is James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of Yahweh. Give me chapter 28 and verse number 50, uh, 51. This is James. This is James 1 and 1. James, a servant of Yahweh and of the Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Talk about everybody. With the 12 tribes which scattered abroad. Oh, see, there it goes. There it goes. With the 12 tribes which scattered abroad. What are you talking about, man? Come to the middle of the Lord, man. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28. This is the book of Deuteronomy 28 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee. 
like, you see, if y'all hear this and the mind knew what the Lord was talking about, this person was going to be fed the blood of, y'all understand instead of jumping right to Paul letters, man. Please. And the Lord shall scatter you among all people from the one end of the earth. What is this curse that Moses is saying is going to happen to the Israelites from the one end of the earth, even unto the other? What? Even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Yeah, I thought I ain't sure these guys, man. Keep going up. Even wood and stone. What's that damn cross in that nasty Muslim cobblestone? Even wood and stone. You don't give a damn about y'all ready. This is preached literally already written that these things are going to happen. But y'all are so, so slow in the mind. Y'all don't understand it, man. This is literally amazing. This is Acts chapter 26 and verse 22. Having therefore attaining help. This is Acts 26 and 22. Right. Heaven, right. therefore, obtain help right. of God. I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things. No, they teaching the new doctrine that everybody in the world can be saved. Saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say. That the prophets and Moses spoke was that Israel was going to have a redeemer come and save them, man. Right? That's all the Lord is saying, man. And we're going to keep bringing it out. Thus said the Lord, man. They can't solve no premise. You got the three stooges come together and try to come get some of the Lord. Man, this don't know what's going on. This is the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? To everybody in the world. 